Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Magbot. We are halfway done with the top 100 games of all time. This video is just kind of a fun one to do a little bit more explication of what types of games made it on the list and why and some of the honorable mentions and my methods and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so I'm ready to get going. How about you? <laughs> Uh, so there was some methods to my madness. I, I took about uh, 450 titles, sorted through them, gave them some thought about what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them. Um, I I have found that, you know, a game, game preferences, just like all other preferences, are subjective. So um, it is true that some games appear here that if I were to objectively look at them, they're probably not as good of a game as another game. But my enjoyment is based on lots of things, and not everything can be quantified in a list like this, you know. Um, there, there are some things that are important to me that aren't the game's fault necessarily, but my own. So if a game is easier to get others to play with me, that's going to bump it up higher than a game that I have to convince someone to play with me. So a lot of those real-time hoofy games that I like so much, they tend to lower uh, on a list than probably my enjoyment of them would seem to make them and um, memories and good good associations of a game um, how I was introduced to it those are all going to come into um, affect my feelings about a game so I, I'm not going to say that these are the 100 best games that ever existed because I think that is hubris and not very fun anyway. This is just my favorite 100 games and hopefully if you've been following along you've been having some fun with me and reminiscing and talking and the comments have been freaking amazing so please keep that up. Keep the conversation going and um, I hope you have fun following me for the next 50. Um, so my process was um, twofold. I used ranking software so that looks between two games, kind of like you have on the screen, Dominant Species or Hatsu Teutonica, and you would choose one or the other. And every single game in the list eventually got kind of shuffled in and placed. And then the second thing that I did was um, went back through that list and kind of adjusted for feelings. Because <laughs> I have feelings about all of this. Um, I used hubmeeple.com. Um, they have a an engine where you can just upload any list and it'll help you rank them. So you just push like left, right, left, right, left, right. And so the one on the screen is 1,196 uh, 1, um, things sorted. And that was just my own games. And then when I put in the full list, which was every game I had logged a play of in BGG, um, that one was so many more um, comparisons. It took me a couple of hours. And so I used pubmeeple.com and then I used Tom Vassell's kind of mental um, method to clean up the list for my feelings. Um, there are some games that don't appear here that would most definitely be somewhere on this list if I had played them more before I had done it. So Navigador is an older Matt Garth's title. I played it once at BGGCon with my friend Chris, once when I got back with my friend Ross, and I now own it, so I played it the other day. It's fabulous and clean and good and smart. It's kind of just what like Matt Gertz is good at. He makes really simple games. And recently I even found out that he draws um, the maps in his games, which is kind of cool. Um, Indonesia and The Great Zimbabwe are spotter titles that had been out of print that I had never played until very recently I picked up both of them. Um, Indonesia, smart, mean, funny, just so good and fun. I don't know where it will be ultimately on the list it's it's a it's a good one and it's not super long and it's very engaging the great zimbabwe i was a little less enthralled by but that's because i played it three players my learning game so i'm gonna go back and play it five player get a few more games of it under me and then form an opinion and oracle of delphi is also not on this list um which is a fairly new stefan feld game i have played a quite a few games of it, i think six or seven but I just don't know where my feelings are about it yet. So it's not on the list, and it probably deserves to be somewhere in the top 100, but they're not going to appear here. That's when we get into honorable mentions, and this is going to be some spoilers of things you wouldn't see in the top 50. Um, but, you know, I thought this would be a fun time to do it because it's, like, halfway through, and I'll just do this little supplement video. 
Okay, so um, none of these appear in my top 100, and most of them probably deserve a, st- a spot. Catacombs is my favorite dexterity game. It's fun and silly and beautiful, and um, I really quite like the game maker. He's a really interesting guy. Sheriff Nottingham has those fabulous little uh, snap bags, and every time you have to decide whether or not you want to hear that new delicious snap, um, Duck Dealer you just can't get it on the table, but it's so funky because, like, all of the actions of the game, any action turns you want to take are a shared pool between all the players. So one player could take, you know, ten actions and everyone else could take three. Uh, it just depends on how it all shakes out. Uh, Mombasa, I didn't quite care for the theme. I thought the game had kind of a best strategy type problem. Algandi is simple, good area control, perfection in game design, just, just sparse. But it's not something I often feel like playing, so it didn't quite make the list. Uh, it's just a really well-designed, very cool game. I feel like The Cat in the Sack is sort of like a no thanksy type game. And I also have um, Mogul, and both of them are just not as good as uh, No Thanks, which is just simple and perfection. Um, Archipelago is one of the better design games I've ever played. It's a big ol' heavy Euro um, Unfortunately, the theme was really just turning me off. And I, colonization is already such a touchy subject that this is one that just for me took it a step too far. Factory Funner is so hard for me. I'm so bad at games like that. And it's so fun. And it's real time, but not like speed real time because you have to be smart about your selections. Um, we have Castles of Magic King Ludwig, which I thought was just such a fabulous little game. I had this beautiful art copy um, I, I don't know, just didn't, something doesn't connect for me to play it very often, so that's probably why it doesn't appear here. Koi Pond is one of my favorite card games that is on this honorable mention. Um, it would be easily in my top 100 if the first round wasn't so boring. It, it doesn't really come alive, and the game doesn't really do what it's supposed to do until you have some cards in the middle to, to interact with everything else. Uh, Chaosmos is such a fabulous, uh, funny, engaging game with a little bit of psychology and a little bit of luck. Um, unfortunately, it's a really rules-heavy party game, if that makes sense, so it's, it's a harder to get to the table kind of game. Car Worlds is probably one of my favorite deck builders that's ever been created, especially with the first expansion, um, but I feel like it's about an hour too long a lot of the time. Uh, Madeira is a really good Euro game. And it, 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 it's smart and it has some cool functions to it, but I do kind of hate how much you have to think about putting one die down before it like ripples through and affects three other actions. It's just not quite my favorite thing. Um, Guy Splits is on here. It's just a nice fun party game, but I mean, just, just not quite enough to, to really warrant being in the top 100. Coup is probably my other than some of the ones you'll see on the list, it's probably one of my favorite deduction games, but it does have kind of a path that it follows. Um, so, you know, you play the Duke for a while, and then, like, you know, everyone kind of does the same thing. And I didn't quite like G54, which allowed you to mix and match new uh, powers. Uh, we found that some of them were just not fun. Fuji Flush, clever, smart little card game. Again, just just not quite enough. Domus Domini is a really neat, hard-to-find Euro that came out of Essen. Um, I just, I mean, it's, it's good. It's just not great. Um, I do own it. I, I, I quite like it and I've taught it to a lot of people, but it's just, just not perfect. And then Codenames is on here. I'm sorry. It's not going to be on my list. I find it to be really fun. It's, it's heck of great. Uh, but it just, for me, I couldn't play Codenames for a full afternoon and have that buzz like of me playing board games. And for me, that buzz is really important. Uh, it's why I love the hobby. It's what I'm addicted to, I think. Um, and lastly, expansions, what gives? Um, so a lot of games, you know, uh, especially Village was one of my early on picks. It's in the, I think the, it's somewhere in the 90s for my top 100. And I had probably four people say, well, but it, it would be so much better if you played it with the port in the end and all this stuff. And honestly, just something in my personality has this, don't mess with the good thing vibe. If I like something, I really don't like something very similar to it. It's why I tend to not have 
I, I don't go super deep on an author. If I really, really love their one book, I probably won't like another one because it'll be good, but not as good as that one thing I loved. And I feel that way a lot about board games. And so the types of expansions I might like would probably just add more cards or some small something, not not turning it on its head because then you just you risk destroying what I really loved about the original game. Uh, that being said, there are a few expansions that I do love. I mentioned just a moment ago, the expansion for Core Worlds was um, what really made that game a cohesive full game because it added one more decision with every single card you played. And I thought that that was really nice and smart. Um, I also, I like uh, expansions that slightly fix a game. So there is a fancy dress expansion in Rococo that I think is quite necessary to the game feeling as balanced and open as I wanted it to. So you won't see a lot of expansions or have a lot of opinions about expansions from me. Um, it's it's slightly different for something like a Netrunner or Millennium Blades or something like that where the game is really built to have different packs and different things interacting with it. It just is like a cartridge that you plug in. And I don't really consider those expansions in the same way. Um, that being said, there are some that I'm really looking forward to. I want to play the Orleon expansions, and I really want to try the Kenna expansion. Those two things look so much fun, and I really would like to give them a try. So um, the last thing you won't see on my list are my influencers. Um, these are the most important things to me about gaming. <laughs> yes, uh, take that in if you will. Um, I come from a background where we didn't have hobby games. We had Martin Bradley. And I have such fabulous memories of playing Monopoly. Um, I really loved the paper money. And I liked being the banker. And I liked trying to figure out a strategy or get ahead of my sisters or whomever I was playing with. Um, Mall Madness was another of my favorite games. Uh, still, I would... I will play this with anyone anytime. Mom Madness is um, was magical. It had that little credit card and you put it in the bank and it was talking to you. And it's just a simple roll and move game, but it is a great memory of mine. But I wanted this list to focus on hobby games because that's what I've devoted myself to for the last several years. Um, Pit will not appear on the list, though it is one of the most important games that uh, in my life. Uh, it was the one game we had at my grandmother's house for a really long time, and I have very few really positive memories of my family, and one of the ones I have is from playing Pit. And um, then the other two things that we have here are, I love spades. I think trick-taking and bidding on tricks uh, is some of the most fun I can have in any kind of game, so... Uh, there are definitely other trick-taking games that I enjoy that have their own place in my heart, but Spades is the, the ultimate. I really love it. Either like two or four players, sometimes three. I like the party game version, which is called Oh Hell. I think it has the mix of skill and luck that I really enjoy in a card game. And speaking of skill and luck, we last get to Cribbage, which is my Desert Island game. If I were to go with one game for the rest of my life that I had access to, it would be Cribbage. Um, I have played more games of Cribbage than any other game combined, I'm sure. If you just combined every other thing I've ever played, it would be less than the number of games of Cribbage I've played. Um, I am trying to get people in the habit of challenging me at cons now. So far, it's been BGG Con this last year and um, upcoming it Origins in a few days. And so, also, I'm on Cribbage Pro on the app, and my nickname there is Maggie Bot, so you can challenge me there. Um, but I, I wanted to keep the list without these types of very sentimental choices, uh, but all of these would be in my top ten if I were to add them anywhere. So, thank you for coming with me. Uh, we will have number 50 through 41 next on the list, uh, coming out next week. And I love you all. Bye!